Hello and welcome to Art by the Lake. If you've been joining us on our previous video series, welcome to our first video on YouTube. Um, we're making the move over to YouTube, so please come and join us. Please tell your friends, please subscribe, uh, please comment. Let me tell you first about what we're going to do today because we're going to make a major mess today and we're going to waste a lot of paint and we're going to do a few techniques that I've not even tried. Um, we've tried quite a few of these paintings and we've tried quite a few different ingredients and different mixes. So what have you missed? So far we have a 16 by 20 stretched canvas. Uh, I have soaked that canvas in water and dried it and then soaked it in water and dried it. I do that three or four times right before I start the painting so that the canvas itself will stretch up a little bit tighter and it helps when you have a larger canvas like this one it helps to avoid pooling in the middle where the canvas will sag. So we have already mixed up some colors. I'm going to mix up the one last color. We're going to do a four cup dirty pour with white negative space. Again, it is a 16 by 20 canvas. It's a big canvas. Um, we have three, four, five, six, seven different colors, four different dirty cups. So this should be quite a mess. Um, so I'm going to mix up one color and then I will tell you about all the other colors and then we'll get going. Uh, I don't know how long I have on this different camera that I'm using. So we're gonna do the best. If we cut out, we will come back with a new segment. So our last color to pour, last color to mix, is going to be a medium green or a lighter green. A little bit on the yellow side. Um, you can see I'm using, this is a Walmart brand, Handy Art Acrylic Paint. Uh, they call this light green, um, relatively cheap paint, as you'll see. For this mix, I'm going to pour about that much in the cup. I'm not sure you can see as a size reference. These are about the size of a shot glass. Um, my next ingredient, and this is a formula I've been using. I use a bunch of different formulas. We're doing some testing today. The next ingredient we're adding in is just a few drops of Liquitex pouring medium. And I think I'm lined up with the camera, so hopefully you can see that. But it's Liquitex pouring medium. I like to mix that. I have some little cut up coffee straws here or coffee sticks. I like to mix the uh, Liquitex pouring medium with the acrylic paint first. Then in about a one to one ratio. So for every one part of paint I have in there, I will have one part of latex Floetrol. Make sure you get the latex variety. You can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's or Amazon. I put it in these little dispensers just to make it a little bit easier to pour. Be sure to label your dispensers so you don't get things confused. You'll see you'll have a lot of different white colored ingredients. Um, and I'll try to hold this out where it's a little easier to see. I'm trying to get a yellow green with this. As you see the colors off to the right are sort of an oceany palette of blues and greens. Again, I will go over those very quickly before we start the dirty pour. So I've mixed that up. You can see it's an even consistency. You have to mix really, really well. Um, you're looking for melted ice cream consistency. I use, instead of just straight water, a lot of people use straight water. I use a 50-50 blend of Floetrol and water when I try to get the right consistency. I like that better than simply just adding water because the pigments in the paint seem to come out a little bit better. It doesn't dilute it as much. It just kind of makes sense that you know the pigment will stay stronger the less water you put in. So I do a 50-50 Floetrol water mixture and again it's about one part of that mixture. So right now we have one part paint, one part Floetrol, and one part 50-50 mixture of Floetrol and water and just a few drops of Liquitex pouring medium. And you can see, I'm not sure you can see that on camera and I don't want to risk dripping it but um, it's about the consistency of melted ice cream that's the best I can uh, best example I can give you for this green color we just want it just a little bit yellower so I'm going to add in just a drop 
or two of yellow. And that is again the same handy art, same brand, the Walmart product, I believe. So again, I'm mixing that up. We're going to use silicone in all of the colors except white. Uh, and in this green, to make things interesting, I'm going to use a new test piece here. It's silicone dimethicone, um, and it's very similar to, to silicone or the uh, treadmill lubricant that many people use, silicone lubricant. This is a cosmetic, food safe um, silicone, but what you will find, and I'm not going to be able to zoom in close enough to show you this, it is the consistency of maple syrup. So, so far I'm not a big fan. Now I'm going to pour just a few drops in here. And as you can see, or maybe not see, pouring just a few drops of this stuff is almost impossible. So there's probably a little bit more in here than I wanted. Um, with silicone, if you mix it a lot, you get smaller cells. If you mix it a little, you get bigger cells. Because this stuff is so syrupy, I'm going to mix it just a little bit more. So, we have four empty cups here, and this is going to be our four cup dirty pour. We're going to put some white negative space in here. I'm going to mix up the cups so that they're not the same. We're going to drop them in on the canvas, do some white negative space around it, and then see how we do. So, let's start pouring these, these, uh, pouring these colors. Um, whatever you pour in first comes out last. So I usually, when I'm using my white, I like to do white first so that it comes out last. White is a heavier pigment, and white will almost always typically sink to the bottom. Um, so that's why you want it to start at the top so that the other colors poke through. I'm going to do a variation here in all the cups, so none of them are quite the same. So you'll see I'm mixing things up, and as I get further with each of these colors, I'm sure I'm going to drip some on the canvas, so I'm going to carry the cups back and forth over here. Um, the colors I'm using, I have uh, a deep blue up top. I have a medium blue. The deep blue was made with a Liquitex Basics in phthalo blue color. Um, this color is a phthalo green with a little bit of blue. This is a turquoise mix with a little bit of permanent light blue, also a Liquitex color. This is a straight up handy art. They call it bright blue, I believe, or cobalt blue. I'm sorry, that's cobalt blue. This is a yellow and gold mix. Again, handy art yellow, as well as a gold color. Uh, and the last one that I showed you was that handy art green. So again, I'm going to pick back up with some of the mixing here and see if we can get this to look like something pretty crazy. I try not to put colors together that are the same, similar hue, so I never put a dark color and a dark color together. I tend to put a light color on a dark color and then a dark color on a light color. And again, you want to make these as random as possible. I realize that I'm grabbing the colors and then pouring them in the same three cups or four cups. So let's mix it up a little bit. Put some yellow in that one. Put some yellow in this one. Try some of this medium blue. Again, this is our first video on YouTube. So if you were a previous follower of ours uh, and you've been following our video elsewhere, um, please subscribe. Please, uh, please be patient as we get some video over here. Um, I'll be doing a video on pouring these acrylics and your shopping list. So I'll be doing a video about you know, how you can do this for a little bit cheaper or if you want to spend a little bit more, how you can do that. I'll also be doing paint mixtures. So don't knock yourself out too much today about figuring out what paint I mix with what. Um, I will be doing full episodes on just the paint mixes that I use. So you'll have that available later as well. And then I'll do one on techniques. We're doing a dirty pour today. We're doing a four cup. It's a complicated dirty pour. There are a lot of other techniques you can use. 
and we'll go over those. We've done some drags, we've done some swipes, we've done some uh, blow dryer, hair dryer art, um, we've done all kinds of stuff. We've experimented with lots and lots and lots of different recipes and lots of different techniques. So I think you'll like it, especially if you want to do this on your own. And I know it's fun to watch me waste paint and dump paint and spill paint and get paint all over myself. But I think you're watching because you want to go do this for yourself. Uh, so you can go do that. Um, and we hope to make it easier. And we hope to save you some money too. We spent a lot of money on things we never used. Sad to say. Um, but we had fun trying. All of our paintings that you see here, um, some of them go to our studio guests, but many, many, many of them will be available on Etsy and on eBay. Uh, we are Art by the Lake on Etsy and eBay. You should be able to find us pretty easily. So if you're interested in purchasing any of these paintings and supporting what we do here at Art by the Lake, um, please, please do so. As you can see, I'm just going back and forth here, back and forth, trying to go quickly so that we don't run out of time on our video. Trying to keep these things down to about 15 minutes, and we're already at 10. So if we get to a point here where I don't think we're going to make it, we'll recharge our batteries and start again. Now, I just saw a lump go in. That's never a good thing. You want to avoid lumps if you can. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We're coming down to the bottom of these cups though, so we're going to give it a run. Let's see, as we get to the bottom you can sometimes get lumps, even if you've mixed really, really well. Uh, don't be too alarmed. Once you see them out on the canvas, usually you can pick them off there while the paint is still wet and get them out of there. You don't want them in the final product. We will do more video later on finishing. Uh, sometimes we do resin, sometimes we do varnish, um, we do a little bit of everything. So I'm noticing these cups have a lot of this deep blue in it, this phthalo blue. Um, so I'm going to set some of that aside and I'm going to set some of the phthalo green aside just in case we need to touch up at the end. Other than that, most of our paint is out. Now, you may be asking yourself, how is he going to get this onto the canvas? Well, as you can see, here's what the cups look like inside. I'm going to use a little flip technique and I'm going to use it on this piece of cardboard. Just a cardboard box. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do this really well on camera, so I will hope for the best. You will spill a little bit, very likely. These are very full cups, so here we go. So there's one. Not too bad. There's two. Spilled a little bit, but not bad. There's three. I'm liking that. And there's four. I like to punch a hole in the bottom. We find that it lets a little air inside. So I'll do that. I just have a sharp knife. and punch that hole in the bottom. Twist it a little bit. You'll see they start to rock and roll when you do that. So now is when you want to pour your white. You'll notice too that I already painted the edges of these canvas, so um, I like to do that just because the paint seems to flow a little bit better when you do it. And I'm going to try to get between these two before they merge. And again, lots of white in the middle. We're going to see how it goes here. We're going to rock and roll. Are we ready? Here comes the mess. The 
If you notice that it's quiet in here, it's because I'm scared to death about what's going to happen next with this one, and away we go. We just hit 15 minutes, so we only have a few more minutes left on video. So, I'm going to, I try to get these, encourage them to get to the edges. I'm going to fill in some of these negative spaces with white to help keep things moving. We're going to spill a lot. So, kind of waiting to do the tilt here. But you'll see we're going to tilt the canvas and hope for the best. How do you like it so far? <laughs> okay. Here comes the mess. If I had better audio, you would hear it dripping. Hopefully not too much on the floor, but we'll see how we do. One last tilt and one last technique, and then we'll see what we think. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm going to rinse my gloves real quickly. I also have a uh, burns matic It is a butane torch. It helps promote cell growth or cell propagation. So I'm going to do that. See if I can get a few more of these colors to pop. But I'm liking it so far. I don't feel any paint on my feet, so that's always a good thing. The negative space has worked out nicely. And I think we have a very good result. Keep the blowtorch moving if you use the blowtorch. You don't want to fry the paint. Okay, I'm going to use, in the remaining few minutes I have, I'm going to use some of my sticks here to just touch up the edges. Doesn't always flow over the edges neatly. If you like this painting, if you like any of our other paintings, any of our other works, again, please subscribe. Please follow us on, uh, on YouTube. Please tell your friends to follow us on YouTube. Please look for us on Etsy. I'll have the details in the comments below. Please comment. We love your comments. I will follow up with another video that I will meld in with this one to show you the end result on this painting. Uh, for now, I'm going to stop the video. And again, thank you for watching. This is Art by the Lake. Find us on Etsy. Find us on eBay. Follow us on YouTube and have fun with it. And we'll have links to where you can get all the equipment that we have here and all the paint. So thank you. Okay, about an hour and a half to two hours has passed. So far, it doesn't look like the paint has drifted too, too much. So it's looking good. I've changed the lighting a bit. There's a big overhead fluorescent light that uh, seems to be reflecting on the high gloss of the paint, especially as it's wet. I haven't reviewed the original video we shot earlier to see if that does affect it, but I thought I would follow up with this one. I'm actually up above so I can control the camera because my hands aren't all covered in paint. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can get some idea of what this looks like up close. You can see some of the detail, some of the cells.
try to zoom in on some of the other areas here and see if I can do that without making you seasick. happy with the mix I'll review the video and see how that came out we are experimenting we have a few different cameras to choose from a few different rigs to choose from so we want to see what works best it's always a little tricky because the paint is such high gloss when it is wet that it just reflects everything so there is our four cup Dirty Pour, Ocean Colors. We will uh, we'll follow up on this one. I'm not really sure what we're going to finish it with. If we're going to resin coat or just varnish or just leave it as is. I'll wait and see when it dries. Uh, like I said, please subscribe. Please follow us. Please tell your friends. Um, if you have any interest in this painting or any of the other flow art we do, you can find us on Etsy. Uh, again, it takes about five, six days to dry, and then I have to decide what to do. So if you're really interested in this painting, you can email me at artbythelake at gmail.com. Um, otherwise, in a week or two, we'll have it all finished up, and we'll have it out on Etsy um, and probably eBay as well. Uh, see the end of this video for details on our Etsy site and our eBay site, but they are both Art by the Lake just like our YouTube site. Thanks again. Stay tuned for more. As I said, we're going to have more video coming soon. And uh, that's all for today. Thanks. Hi, welcome back. We are about 24 hours after our four cup dirty pour. Um, we switched the lighting around so you can maybe see a little bit better. and. We have switched cameras too. So we have a different rig going here to see if you can see the painting a little bit better, if the details a little bit better. I noticed when I played back the first portion on the other camera that there was a lot of searching for sharp focus. So hopefully uh, this is a much better camera and this does a much better job. So you can see the paint itself has moved. Um, quite a bit. I'll be anxious to stack this up with the other video to see how much it's moved. But you can see that white center portion has moved quite a bit. So um, we're going to keep our eye on it. The painting is still wet. You can see we switched the lighting. Yesterday that bright fluorescent overhead light uh, just created a white stripe down the center of the painting. So uh, it made it really hard to see. Um, we had our first spill on the floor last night. Late last night I came out to take a peek to see how things were going and um, down toward what is the bottom of your frame. As you can see it sort of ran off there and it ran off the edge of the table and onto the floor. Uh, thankfully it's an epoxy floor so it just wiped right up because it's acrylic paint. So here's 24 hours later. Stay tuned again. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to add any other additional updates. I may take some photos later and tag those photos in at the end, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, again, if you like this painting, contact me at artbythelake at gmail.com or find us on Etsy or eBay, uh, and we are Art by the Lake there as well. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Thank you.